Welcome to Mrs. Taylor's math class. If this is your first time in my classroom, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel and turn on that bell so that you will be notified when I post another video. Now let's begin class. Today's topic is FTCE General Knowledge Math Subtest Competency 4, Knowledge of Probability, Statistics, and Data Interpretation. A link to this sample math test will be left in the description box below. The children in the family are ages 2, 2, 6, 12, 16, 19, and 20. What is the mean of the children's ages? The word mean indicates average or to find the average of a set of numbers. To calculate the average, you add up all the numbers in the data set. Then you divide it by the total number that you have. So in this data set, we have seven numbers. We're going to add up all seven numbers, which equals 77, and divide it by 7 to get 11. If the company would like to give the impression that its employees are highly paid, which salary statistics should it use? Answer choice A, minimum, is the lowest value, or in this case, yearly salary, which is $15,000. Answer choice B, mode. This is the number that appears the most in the data. In this case, it is $15,000 again. Answer choice C, median. Median is the middle number. So we would need to put the numbers in order from least to greatest and then determine which number is going to be the middle number. In this case, it's going to be $15,000. Finally, answer choice D, the mean. We know the mean to mean average. So the average of the numbers we have in our data set is $280,000. We have seven numbers in our data set, so we divide that number by seven to get $40,000. So that is what we're going to use to give the impression that the employees are highly paid. 8 pumpkins were picked from a garden. Their weights were 8 pounds, 3 pounds, 7 pounds, 16 pounds, 8 pounds, 13 pounds, 12 pounds, and 1 pound. How much greater than the mean was the heaviest pumpkin? To solve this problem, we have to calculate the mean first. So we're going to add up all of the numbers and then divide it by 8. So the mean came out to be 8.5 pounds. So now we have to figure out, well, which one is the heaviest pumpkin? Well, the heaviest pumpkin weighs 16 pounds. So we're going to find the difference. 16 pounds minus 8.5 pounds, which is the average, is going to get us 7.5 pounds. A child has 26 pennies. 15 nickels, 21 dimes, 18 quarters in a coin bank. When the child picks up the bank, a single coin falls out. What is the probability that the coin is a quarter? The first step would be to figure out the total number of coins. So let's add them up. 26 plus 15 plus 21 plus 18 is going to get us 80 coins. To calculate the probability, we would need to set up a ratio. So quarters over the total number of coins in the bank is going to be 18 over 80. We can simplify this ratio by dividing both the 18 and the 80 by 2 to get 9 over 40. A consultant uses the following graph to justify why air conditioning costs were higher in 2014 then in 2015, what aspect of the graph makes it misleading? 
A says the bars are different heights. Well, that's okay. They're not misleading. One is at 50, another is at 53, and another is at 51. They're just fine. Part B says the vertical axis does not start at zero. Well, we don't know where it starts. There's nothing there indicating that it starts at zero. It could start at five. It could start at 20. We don't know. So that is a bit misleading. Part C says the scale on the horizontal axis is too large. Well, it's measuring the year. So it's just telling you which year and the number of days the temperature was above 80 degrees. So it's not misleading at all. And for part D, the increments on the vertical scale are not equal. Well, they are equal. It goes from 50 to 51 to 52. So it's increasing by one unit or one degree for every increment. So we're back to answer choice B, which is the one that is misleading in this problem. What is the median of the numbers in the following data set? 14, 14, 12, 8, 14, 8, 14, and 4. So again, to find the median, we are looking for the number that is in the middle when we put our data in order from least to greatest. Because we have an even amount of data, we have to take the two middle numbers and we have to add those quantities together and then divide by two, and that is going to give us our median. So we take the 12 plus the 14 to get 26 divided by two, which is 13. A basketball coach would like to know the total number of points the team scored in a 15 game season. Which of the following measures would provide the coach with the additional information needed to make this determination. The mean would give the average number of points the team scored in the 15 game season. The median would give the middle number. So once you put all the game scores in order from least to greatest, whatever the middle number is, is what the median is going to be. The mode would tell the final score that occurred the most out of the 15 game season. And the range is the difference between the highest and the lowest score. So the mean is the best measure to provide the coach with the additional information. A teacher gives a test and notes that the mean is 79 points and the standard deviation is two points. Which of the following is the best interpretation of this result? The standard deviation is going to be the number of points before and after the mean. So 79 is your mean. So before the mean and after the mean, you have to go two points up and two points down. Or you can say 79 plus two to get 81 and 79 minus two to get 77. So we are going to choose answer choice B most of the test scores are between 77 and 81. The owner of a roller skating rink needs to purchase women's skates. After reading that the mean women's shoe size is a seven, the owner decides to purchase mostly women's size seven skates. Which of the following statements, if true, best supports the owner's decision? The owner decides to use the mean as a determining factor in purchasing the skates for the women. So we can eliminate answer choice A and B because they are making reference to the median and the range.
We can also eliminate answer choice D because it is comparing the mean and the median. So C, the mode of the shoe sizes is equal to the mean is the statement that best supports the owner's decision. A marketing company wants to determine consumer attitudes about a brand of soap in a particular city. Which of the following groups would make the best survey sample? If for answer choice A, customers who purchase the product on a regular basis would be biased for the product, so they would not make a very good sample for the survey. Answer choice B says registered voters who tend to vote in every election and answer choice D, employees who work for one of the town's largest firms. Neither of these answer choices would be a good representation of the population. Answer choice C, residents who are selected using a random process would be the group that would make the best survey sample because it's a great variety of consumers. An ecologist takes a 0.05 milliliter drop of water from a stream and examines it under a microscope. The ecologist counts 25 examples of a particular microscopic organism. Using ratio and proportion, the ecologist infers that there are 0.5 million of these organisms per liter of water in the stream. Which of the following is the most important assumption that the ecologist makes with this inference? To infer is to base your conclusion off facts or evidence. We know that A is going to be our answer, but let's look at why B, C, and D are not our answers. B says no water evaporated while on the microscope slide. There's nothing in our scenario talking about evaporation. For answer choice C, the organisms were not affected by the microscope light. Well, there's nothing in our scenario talking about the light from the microscope. Answer choice D, all equipment was sterilized after the test was conducted. Well, in the scenario, it doesn't make any reference to what happened to the equipment after the experiment. The most important assumption the ecologist makes with this inference is answer choice A, the drop of water was a representative sample. A company's human resources department is tracking the percentage of employees out sick and the relative humidity of the air in the building. Which of the following conclusions can be best inferred using the following data. Before looking at our answers, let's look at the graph. It is a scatter plot. What I can conclude by looking at the graph, as the relative humidity increases, so does the number of employees out sick. For answer choice A, high values of relative humidity cause people to become sick. It does not cause them to become sick. It says that employees are out sick. Let's look at answer choices C and D. Many employees are getting sick from the mold and mildew in the building, and the negative effect of overcast sunless days is influencing employees' health. We can eliminate these answer choices because it's not related to the graph or the words in our scenario. So as the percent of relative humidity increases, so does the percent of employees out sick increase. So answer choice B, when many employees are out sick, the relative humidity tends to be high, is our answer choice. The mayor of a city announces that there were 50% fewer automobile accidents this year than last year. Which of the following is the most important additional piece of information needed to properly interpret these results? 
Answer choice A, the total number of accidents each year. The mayor needs to know this information in order to calculate the percent of increase or decrease from year to year. Answer choice B, the total number of cars registered in the city. Answer choice C, the traffic density on the roads where accidents occur. Answer choice D, the number of dangerous intersections that were redesigned. These three answer choices would not give any important information when calculating the automobile accidents. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Class is dismissed.